Welcome to the Corp Vault channel. In this video, we will discuss Com Vault storage policies. Please like, share, comment, subscribe for more videos, and you can follow us on Instagram. Let's first check the available storage policies in this environment from the ComCell browser. Expand policies. Click on Storage Policies. You see one policy, called ComServe DR. This policy is for disaster recovery backup. This is the first policy in this environment, which is automatically created, by the system. The main function of the storage policy is, to map data, from its original location, to a physical media. They act as a channel, for backup, and restore operations. Right click storage policies, to check available options. You can create a new storage policy. Create a new, global deduplication policy. This policy helps, enable deduplication across, multiple storage policies that use, a common set of disk libraries, and a duplication database. Create a new, global secondary policy copy. This policy helps consolidate backups from multiple storage policy copies, like disk and tape, onto one media. You can configure a global secondary copy policy using a tape network storage pool. Subclient associations using this, you can associate all subclients to one storage policy. Add to my favorites of the ComCell browse. Let's check each option to its possible detail. Click New Storage Policy. As you see, you can either create a data protection and archiving policy or a disaster recovery backup policy. These are the two primary policies, apart from global deduplication. You cannot create any other kind of policy directly. They must be created under a data protection policy. By default, System creates a default Convault disaster recovery policy, but if you want to create another one, you can do so by choosing this option. Select Data Protection and Archiving. Name the storage policy. Usually, people follow a specific naming pattern for easy identification. Incremental Storage Policy. First of all, this is optional. Select the incremental storage policy checkbox, and then select an appropriate storage policy, from the list. The selected storage policy will be used, to run an incremental backup. What this mean is, you can create a standard storage policy, for all the full backups, and an incremental storage policy, for incremental, and differential backups. On command unified manager is, NetApp database management software, required for NetApp Snap Vault, or Snap Mirror operations. Select, provide the on command unified manager server information checkbox, to access the on command unified manager server information. In the select the library page, select a library from the library for primary copy list. In the Select a Media Agent page, select the Media Agent, from the Media Agent list, that will be used to write to the library. Enter the Streams and Retention Criteria page, in the Number of Device Streams box, specify the number of streams, to perform backup, or restore operations, for all the sub-clients, that will use this storage policy. A thumb rule is, one backup stream, needs one device stream. For example, if you have a tape library with, four tape drives, then the device stream's value is four. Likewise if you have a disk library with, one mount path, and the allocated writers on it is five, then the device stream's value is five, but not one, that is mount path. Under I data agent backup data area, specify the amount of time, in days and number of full backups, in cycles, that you want to retain the data, that is backed up through this storage policy. For example, for two weeks retention, 
the days will be 14, and cycles are of our choice. If we consider one full back up a week, then we need to choose two cycles. How it works, we will discuss this topic in more detail, when we discuss the storage policies properties. In the advanced settings for the primary copy page, select the software encryption option, to encrypt data in the primary copy. From the cipher list, select a cipher of your choice. From the key length list, select 128 or 256. In, do you want to enable the duplication for the primary copy page? If we do not want the duplication enabled for the storage policy, then uncheck the option yes. Review your selections. Click finish to create the storage policy. If we want to continue with deduplication, we need to specify the location to store the deduplication database. Name of the deduplication is prenamed by application, but if needed, we can change it. Selected media agent name is displayed here. Enter a valid location of DDB. VSS Cal Cache, the DDB backup process uses VSS, for Windows, and LVM, or thin volume in Unix, to create snapshot of a DDB. Usually, it needs 5% of volume space, as Cal space. Review your selections. Click Finish, to create the storage policy. If we enable use of partition to duplication database, under Configure to duplication database, we get option to create partitions for the DDB. The maximum number of partitions allowed is 4, and you cannot create more than that. Clicking on the Calculate link, under Calculate the number of partitions by application size, will take you to the ComVault documentation website. Under Partition 1, click Choose Path. Selected Media Agent is shown here. Expand Advanced Options. We see the DDB Network Interface, as default, and VSS Cal Cache, as default. Under Partition Path, browse and selection the location, where the DDB would be hosted. Choose Path for Partition 2 as well. Selecting the same location, pop out error, asking to ensure that partition path is unique, for each partition. So, we cannot use the same location, for two different DDB partitions. Select a different path. Review your selections. Click finish, to create the storage policy. For now, we are not creating a deduplication policy. Review your selections. Click Finish, to create the storage policy. Storage policy is created. You can view some details about the policy, like, type of policy, number of clients associated, to this policy, number of streams configured, number of copies of this policy, and so on. Let's proceed with next actions. Right click on Storage Policies, select New Global Deduplication Policy. Name the Global Deduplication Policy. As this is Global Deduplication Policy, Incremental Storage Policy option is disabled. In the Select the Library page, Select a library from the library for primary copy list. In the Select a Media Agent page, select the Media Agent, from the Media Agent list, that will be used to write to the library. In the Advanced Settings for the Primary Copy page, select the Software Encryption option, to encrypt data in the primary copy. In, do you want to enable the duplication for the primary copy page, you see, yes. Checkbox is already selected. Leave the option, Enable use of partition deduplication database, disabled. 
We have already gone through this page before, where it says, specify the location to store the deduplication database. Enable the option, enable use of partitioned deduplication database. We have already gone through this page before, where it says, configure deduplication database. Name of the deduplication is, pre-named by application, but if needed, we can change it. Selected media agent name is displayed here. We need to, specify the location to store the deduplication database. Let's leave default for, VSS Cal Cache. Review your selections. Click Finish, to create the storage policy. Global deduplication policy is created. Right click on storage policies, select, new global secondary policy copy. This policy is used, to consolidate backups from multiple storage policy copies, like disk and tape, on one media. You can configure, a global secondary copy policy, using a tape network storage pool. Name the policy. In, select the library for primary copy, we do not see any libraries listed, as we do not have any other libraries created, apart from primary disk library. We can't proceed, until we have created another library. Right click on storage policies, select, sub client associations. If you notice for all the sub-clients, we do not see any storage policy associated, we can select the clients, from the list, and then from change all selected storage policies, to the one that is needed. Click, apply to make the changes, by this way you can change the policy, to multiple sub-clients in one go, rather selecting each sub-client from client computers, and changing them manually. Now that we have created global deduplication policy, let us create a new deduplication policy. Right click on storage policies. Select, new storage policy. Select storage policy type as, data protection and archiving. Name the policy of your choice. We discussed about below two options before. You can select the incremental storage policy, from the list. In, do you want to use global deduplication policy page? Select no, under, use existing global deduplication policy, if you wish to proceed for normal, non-deduplication policy. Click yes, to use existing global deduplication policy, by default, enable client side deduplication is enabled, you can disable it if you like. Having it enabled means, to deduplicate the backup data, at the source side, before transferring the data, to media agent. This setting would be applicable, to all deduplication enabled jobs, on all the clients, associated with this policy. Select global deduplication policy to the storage policy, from the list. We discussed about these options earlier. Review your selections. Click Finish, to create the storage policy. New deduplication policy is created. You can also differentiate, a deduplication policy, to a non-deduplication policy, by looking at the icon. We will end this video here. In our next video we will discuss the storage policy properties, and try our best to discuss them in detail. Stay tuned, to our channel by subscribing it, if not already done. Do subscribe for more videos. Thank you.